What are your thoughts around bot personas? It, first of all, it helps to build consistent conversations because the conversation writer or copywriter or conversation yeah. designer can always think from that person, uh, yeah, from that persona and, and remember the style and the kind of words, wording that's used. Yeah. Uh, especially when you have more than one uh, team member writing stuff, it's uh, easy to get different styles without really noticing. So. Welcome to Conversations That Matter, a podcast from Unifor. Here we explore the latest customer experience trends, sales insights, innovations in AI and automation, and more with well-known thought leaders and industry experts. Tune in and join the conversation. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Conversations That Matter. I'm your host, Randy Sar, and awesome to have you here. We are joined by Berhan Jurnhurst, and I probably butchered that name, but uh, Berhan, welcome uh, to the show today. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. So, love that you're here. We met through the magic of the interwebs uh, through LinkedIn, uh, and you're yeah. a conversational AI expert. Uh, you also uh, started your own conversational AI community. You're bot, uh, building chatbots and, and other uh, voice-enabled multimodal uh, experiences. So it's, it's amazing uh, that you joined us uh, on Conversations That Matter. So thanks again. Yeah, thanks for having me. So everyone, uh, thanks for, for, for tuning in. Uh, we, this is a LinkedIn Live. We are loving that you're joining us. Uh, comment below on where you're from. And we want to know what is one myth or misconception about conversational AI that you would like to debunk? And so that is going to be our first question of the day for Bar Baron. And let us know uh, in the comments what is your one myth that you would like to debunk. And we've talked a lot about it on this podcast. Again, this podcast uh, is available on unifor.com as well as the usual podcast directories, Apple, Google, Spotify, and so forth. So. Um, let us know in the comments what your one myth or misconception is that you keep on hearing that people just, you just have to re-explain yourself all the time. So Baron, uh, tell us, yeah. uh, what is your one myth, uh, or misconception about building applications, uh, that, uh, leverage conversational AI technology? Um, well, they, they change over the years, but <laughs> what I wrote down, uh, primarily was you cannot have an intern. Uh, pull your conversational AI project because thank God we don't see it that much anymore in, in vacancies, but uh, <laughs> companies yeah. companies thought, yeah, we, we must do something with, with this. We have no budget. Uh, yeah, let's get an intern. <laughs> and then I feel sorry for the guy or girl uh, <laughs> who yeah. will step into it, but it's very brave. But uh, yeah, and the same goes for uh, yeah, you shouldn't uh, let, uh, let the IT company yeah, pull it and, and make it an IT party because it's so multidisciplinary. And yeah, I think I think we uh, get new myths now with Jet GTP. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and all the large language models uh, raising expectations. So I think a myth that I will then definitely uh, choose <laughs> is that yeah, you just put your bot live and then it runs for you and it uh, automatically uh, <laughs> the does magic, everything. You know? The magic of AI, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we are able to uh, build stuff faster thanks to great software, but still there's a lot of uh, yeah, manual uh, work and brain power needed. Yeah, uh, for sure, for sure, yeah. It's, it's, it takes a team. We've talked a lot about AI trainers, about uh, conversational designers. Uh, you know, everything when you're when you're building a a, a chatbot uh, should include all facets of communication to your brand, right? Yeah, and it was very interesting how the team will change over time. You know, uh, yeah, for sure. You, you, you start small, or at least that's one of my tips I wrote down for later. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. If, if you get bigger, your bot get bigger or more bots. Yeah, you might need uh, some more data analysis, uh, skilled people and stuff like that. But, yeah, for it's sure. super exciting. Uh, I think we have the most exciting uh, uh, yeah, industry in, in the world with, with these aspects of 
tech and data and, and psychology and language, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is this one of the most exciting jobs that you've ever had? Uh, now, right now, you just finished a stint uh, working on it with a client uh, for a year of yeah. building a conversational AI bot. But in the past, uh, what kind of uh, jobs led you to this uh, position? To this, yeah, you know, skill set? Uh, I'd love to hear well, about that. I, I started coding some lines uh, on my gaming computer in the 80s. Okay. Um, and, you, and you're doing basic or what were you doing? Yeah, G J W basic uh -huh. on, the, on the MSX uh, gaming computer until my bigger brother would kick me off uh, play <laughs> games, which I also love. Uh, <laughs> but but uh, yeah, I just wrote an article also includes this story. But at the same time, I fell in love with Star Wars and, and yeah, watched everything uh, sci-fi I could get. Yeah. And, but then yeah, I decades later I ended up in. Uh, Business intelligence. Okay. My first, uh, first jobs. Later, pissed more to yeah, web development. Um, then social media came up. And, yeah, I started getting to know APIs and uh, doing stuff with that. So, so, yeah. Small tech startup. And, but I was still looking because the development is so cumbersome, you know. CSS and different screen types. It's not sizes, types, it's not clean, you know? Yeah. And yeah, in 2018, I, I, I fell in love with Jetbots uh, within a couple of hours and I knew <laughs> the relationship would last, uh, yeah, at least a decade. It's a very strong feeling and uh, it didn't uh, go away. And, and when I speak to people, they, they, uh, most of them, yeah, they experience the same uh, love for, for what we do. Yeah, for sure. We have a good community. You've invited your community. I know is listening in on LinkedIn as well. So shout out to them. Thanks all for for tuning in. We have people from Canada joining us, from London, from the Bay Area, from Frankfurt. Uh, thanks all uh, for joining this uh, this conversation. Yeah, super cool. Uh, so uh, you know, hashtag on this is the CTM podcast. So if you're on the Twitterverse or on LinkedIn, just use the hashtag CTM podcast. Uh, so, uh, curious, uh, as you have built numerous uh, different uh, virtual assistants, let's call them self-service virtual assistants, um, what has been your process? Uh, you know, what, what have you followed? What's kind of like the standard? Um, say you're starting from scratch, you, you work with a client, you start from scratch, and then you kind of launch it. Um, what's what's kind of the, maybe, I don't know, what, what are the four or five kind of main uh, steps within that process? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have to admit I didn't start from scratch, but yeah, stepped in when companies were like uh, half year busy, you know, one year with the team. Yeah. Uh, and, and some at the traditional second try, you know, the first bot project usually uh, fails with companies and then they... they why is that? Why, why is it fail? What, what, do you, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, maybe because the intern had to pull it, or, or uh, yeah, it's it's unknown territory and underestimated. Uh, yeah. Therefore, I think, and yeah, what's important is also to not start with too many use cases because, yeah, when, when then your traffic grows and you see uh, more things you want to develop, but you also have to maintain your the business cases, the use cases you chose initially, and you end up, yeah, feeling lost, and there's just too much work for the team. So, yeah, to start from scratch, you, uh, yeah, if you have conversational data available somewhere, maybe live chat or even, uh, you know, transcripts for, uh, from the cobot when people just, uh, yeah, tell the computer what they are calling about. Yeah, please, please use that and, and go into the data and yeah, try to find uh, yeah, try to find a topic. It's hard to put boundaries <laughs> around the topic because some things uh, yeah overlap and stuff. But uh, yeah, start start small, think big. But yeah, yeah, uh, and people want. 
to get their stuff done, you know, so you could also start really small, but with a transactional use case, uh, yeah, just give an order status. Uh, or, as an example, yeah, order status yeah, is yeah. a good one. Or, yeah, or when, uh, yeah, when do I receive my refund, I'm now a bit uh, in the e-commerce uh, context, but uh, yeah, start small and, and don't underestimate it. And, yeah, that, yeah. Or you must, you know, educate or retrain current uh, or employees you already have in other departments. Or yeah, okay. Try Tell to us find what do you mean by that? So retrain, retrain in, in what fashion? What are the skill sets you think uh, are, are needed? Well, I uh, <clears throat> yeah, I saw people coming from like the content management teams, you know, of, of websites of big companies. Uh, mm -hmm. So they maybe started like uh, half a week in the conversational AI team and half a week the uh, original job. And okay. uh, yeah, UX designers are also, uh, yeah, they, they have the right skill sets uh, for sure to, to, uh, to join a conversational adventure. What do you, yeah. th what do you think are some of the, the top challenges that you've dealt with uh, in, in working with clients? Um, what are some of the you know, we talked about myths and misconceptions, but what are some of the challenges that you have made the, made the roadblocks that you, you try and uh, um, kind yeah. of push to the side as much as you can? Um, well, when you, yeah, once you get your bot uh, talking and chatting and data comes in, you'll find that, yeah, getting statistics and reports on your conversational AI data is, is quite a challenge. and. And it, I can compare it really well because I used to work in the business intelligence with yeah. structured, very structured data, you know. It was, no, it was not simple, but it was more, it was less complex maybe because, yeah, a sale has an, uh, a date and a client and a product ID, you know. And yeah. You, you link stuff together, but yeah, when you look at the conversation, it's, it's rather unstructured. So, yeah, the reporting and analytics is... Uh, challenge on its own and I also noticed that not everybody likes this part <laughs> from your <laughs> team you know <laughs> well yeah. it, it brings the majority up a... wants to stay away from that stuff yeah, yeah they just want to launch the product and just like okay check I'm done yeah. um, so let's get to a, a part that I think is you know why are we doing this uh, and I think in, in for businesses, you know, one of the use cases for building these self-service experiences is conversational AI um, leveraged, you know, using conversational AI technology is driving revenue. Um, what are your thoughts around how to, how, how to actually do that uh, with the conversational experience? And have you done that in the past with some of your clients? Uh... Yeah, I started working at a Dutch uh, agency, uh, Chatbots Expert, uh -huh. um, and, and they, yeah, they have projects for M and M's, you know, and uh, also like small businesses that made uh, that had a well-running web shop, for example. So, uh, yeah, for M and M's, they made a nice, very nice campaign with uh, it was like a rebus or a quiz. Uh -huh. you, you should yeah you should puzzle a bit to find out what the new taste would be that would be released uh, like in three months and it was uh, yeah very nice branding and but yeah for the e-commerce side you can uh, yeah you can help people to choose in because I'm looking for a new laptop for example but there are like a gazillion uh, <laughs> options you know <laughs> yeah, yeah so it, with the right asking the right questions, like I don't know, between five or ten, uh, because yeah, you, know, you do have to get into some details. Um, you can narrow down the options and, and present a list of uh, of the best five, and maybe they can click to the next uh, set mm -hmm. of five. But conversational is ideal for that, uh, because yeah, you. You just get take the user by the hand and 
of these questions one by one, and you can uh, throw in some uh, giffies, uh, you know, like saying uh, <laughs> if you're halfway, don't uh, don't give up. We're almost there. So you can really motivate people, and yeah, uh, we, we touching talked screens on... and, and keyboards is is unnatural. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, we talked uh, on a previous podcast uh, with uh, a lady by the name of Kayla uh, Orzko, uh, and she uh, is a conversational designer at a home improvement retailer. So she's in the retail business, and she's working on the on the on, on their chatbot. And one of the things that she talked about was a bot persona, making sure that you have that bot persona nailed down, so that not that it needs to act like a human, but you know, trying to you know, people know that it's a chatbot, but you need to have that persona that can relate and be empathetic towards uh, the people's questions and, and the flow. What are your thoughts around bot personas? Yeah, it, it uh, first of all helps to build consistent conversations because the conversation writer or copywriter or conversation yeah. designer can always yeah, think from that person, uh, yeah, from that persona, and, and remember the style and the kind of words, wording that's used. Yeah. Uh, especially when you have more than one uh, team member writing stuff, it's uh, easy to get different styles without really noticing. So, for sure, then, then it's for sure uh, important. Um, yeah, empty is. I I hear different opinions uh, for the last. <laughs> Couple of years. It's, it's an overused word, but what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, like for this biggest energy company I worked for here in the Netherlands, uh, Ascent, uh, part part of Eon from Germany. Uh -huh. uh, we had this example, like somebody said, "Yeah, I'm moving to a new place," you know, uh -huh. and then. The bot said, uh, could say, oh, oh, great, congratulations. But maybe the guy or, or the family they lost uh, the, a job, a lot of income, and yeah. had to leave. You know, it, you never know. It's, uh, it's no context, tricky yeah. To, uh, yeah, to guess the, the context for, uh, for empathy. But yeah, you, you don't want to say sorry this, sorry for that all the time in the book, but you have to find <laughs> yeah. some way in the middle. It's uh, delicate. Yeah, uh, common but balance, for sure. And it's it's also interesting, and maybe that will become more uh, feasible with current uh, technology. But yeah, to, maybe you could have more than one persona. You know, if, if my parents sure. talk to chatbot, they, yeah. It might be a different lingo needed than <laughs> yeah. my teenage kids uh, yeah, contacted the bot, you know? Yeah, for sure. So that's also very interesting. But uh, yeah, then you get more like dynamic uh, output and natural language generation. But uh, yeah, they're nice uh, things to think about. Uh, but but I, I think, or I, yeah, I'm pretty sure there is no chatbot team out there in in big enterprises that has nothing to do. They all have like 10 times more on the backlog, you know, than what they can do. So, yeah, these are really extras. And uh, it would be cool if some uh, businesses could, could experiment with that. Yeah. Um, so you're from uh, Amsterdam. Yes. Uh, yes. You know, for those uh, tuning in, uh, maybe they haven't been to Amsterdam before. I know I haven't been. Tell us uh, something about Amsterdam. You know, sell us Amsterdam. Why should we come and visit Amsterdam? Uh, well, <laughs> the city actually tries to limit the amount of tourists coming to Amsterdam. <laughs> it does. <right? laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, what makes but, it what makes it your hometown? What, why do you love it so much? Yeah, I call it like a really big village. You know, you have uh, you have a huge old yeah huge part of our city is just very old uh, old buildings from the. 1700s, maybe even uh, older, and yeah, it's funny that still most tourists focus on the same circle in the center, and they <laughs> go to all these. Uh, yeah, yeah, there are great uh, attractions and things to see, but yeah, the areas around it are maybe even nicer, and, and yeah. then you see the real life of 
people living in. So, yeah. And I, how long have you been living there? Uh, I, I came here in uh, uh, nine, 94. 94? Oh, awesome. So, yeah. It's almost 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Um, so, one of the re main reasons that we wanted to talk to you about uh, was around community. Uh, and, and you started a, uh, a, a online community, and even in person, uh, around conversational AI and, and, and chatbots. Uh, tell us, uh, what is that community? How did it get started? Um, we'd love to hear more yeah. about that. And I'm sure some of the people that are, are joining us uh, from that community can, can chime in too on their experiences. Exactly, and then it becomes clear why Benjamin uh, was already asking uh, where the beers are. <laughs> He's not an alcoholic. And, uh, <laughs> right. No, but I'll start at the beginning. Uh, yeah, so I, like I said, 2018 I started and I just thought, okay, let's just mass invite people on LinkedIn who are second line connections already in uh -huh. this space and uh, so without sending any message with the invite, I just uh, yeah, sat in the garden and tap 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 on my, <laughs> my iphone and uh, yeah and while i was, was doing that i saw messages coming in like hey cool that you're also uh, new in this space and uh, maybe we have a skype call i think we still need skype back then. or uh, yeah or some guys who had an uh, yeah built their own platform here in amsterdam they invited me and i already right away thought okay this is really uh, energetic and open uh, group of uh, people uh, awesome yeah Very enthusiastic and I, I yeah I thought okay now I have like uh, hundreds of new connections <laughs> new friends uh, but I have no content so I I decided to interview people and uh, first I just uh, recorded it uh, you know uh, offline so to say uh -huh. with, the, with that uh, person. And then I find the best, uh, you know, speech to text uh, software I could get to uh, transcribe it and make a sort of article of it. Uh, and then after a couple of months, uh, yeah, I was contacted by a guy also from the West Coast, by the way, Chad Oda. And he said, listen, uh, Baron, uh, you, me, and uh, Jim Rowe from the UK, we are the only guys who seem to be pushing content, why not join forces? Um, yeah, follow Jim Rowe if you uh, don't follow him already. He, he's yeah, no, a I, I, I do. producer of content. Yeah. I, I do. Uh, I definitely want to get him on the podcast. Um, yeah, and he, yeah. uh, so let me just put the, for those of you that are listening, we'll put all these links in the show notes of the podcast so you can get access to them. And then for those who are watching, uh, that's the website, Bob, uh, essentially botpreneurs, uh, dot live, uh and that is where you will find all of the events online and in person. Um, so, yeah. why do you think why do you think community is so important uh, in in learning a new technology? Because you know, I think for some people this is something new in terms of conversational AI, um, and, and and maybe for others that are more experienced. You know, why do they need a community? What's the, the purpose of it? Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's related, first of all, to the complexity of what we do. Because, yeah, looking at, you know, questions that pop up in the team I worked in, uh, most of the times the answer is not, oh, that's simple, it's, it's that and yeah. that. Usually it's, oh, it depends. We have to check this. We have to find data of that. And maybe we have to do some A-B tests. Yeah? It's, it's always uh, always a challenge. Even when you think, oh, this is something minor. Then your teammates might say, oh, did you think of this, uh, Baron? <laughs> so, yeah, we have more than enough to discuss and, and to learn from each other. And I think because we all entered relatively new, some were already uh, kicking it a couple of years, but uh, yeah. yeah, there was there was and still is quite a willingness to share best practices. Yeah, for sure. And, and uh, 
I think community is key to, to push uh, yeah, to push the industry forward. And I yeah, I always like connecting people and organizing stuff. And uh, and I think yeah, Chad Oda said why why don't we uh, because he was already doing inter interviews uh, on on Zoom which he recorded, and then he said why don't we uh, yeah build this Facebook group because. Facebook was the place to be with the messenger bots. Mm -hmm. you know. And then we started doing live interviews on, on Facebook, like the same concept that we do now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And cool. People joined the... and people left within the botpreneurs team. I got the lights on. Um, and, and sometimes I yeah, started scheduling new interviews again. And during the pandemic, um, I, yeah, I was thinking I, I really miss these conferences because I went to a couple just before Corona hit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a couple in uh, in Berlin, uh, the Chatbot Summit were awesome. Um, and I, I thought, well, the part I miss most is yeah, not the talks uh, on stage. Uh, yeah, yeah, the networking. The networking, the, so the moments in between or prior or after, because um, that's the power of conversation, you know. Yeah, yeah. I could be, or you could be telling your story on your on your own without <laughs> having a guest, but and without looking at the questions and the comments. But it, you never get the same value if you, uh, yeah, if you compare it to having a conversation. Yeah. And I think. Yeah, I was thinking uh, prior to this interview, but the yeah, power of community is also that you speak people more than once, uh, because then a relationship is starting to form, you know? When you meet somebody once, yeah, you might be able to help each other, or but yeah, you need a little more to build trust and, and do business partner up or hire somebody or yeah, whatever. And so uh, what, what, what's some of the uh, upcoming events that uh, you are organizing and that others can, can join in? Yeah. Uh, so during Corona, I, yeah, I, I went uh, online to search for, uh, if there was a platform software to mimic yeah, a networking event. Uh, and I, yeah, I found I found a couple, um, so, and I, I asked my, following my connection, prior to really setting it all up, if they would be interested, and there was like, yeah, really positive, a uh, lot of positive reactions, so, yeah, I think uh, entrepreneurs almost organized a dozen of those online meetups in this virtual space. Um, so you just enter there, you can turn on your webcam, it's then visible in a small circle and you can drag yourself around in this virtual area. So multiple conversations happen simultaneously. And when you're close enough to a group of people, you can hear them and they can hear you. So it's, it's, it's yeah, it's pretty fun. And uh, yeah, we just, I open up that space for three hours, people come and go and uh, yeah. And cool. relationships are built and business is done and yeah, yeah, a lot of things are uh, <laughs> exchanged and learned from each other. And yeah, uh, and then I, I asked uh, Jim Beck to join and uh, also Martin Redstone joined, also a uh, must follow <laughs> conversational AI, AI guy. Um, and they actually said, yeah, well, there is no Corona anymore. Uh, Baron, why don't you organize something? IRL, you know? Yeah. And I always thought, yeah, it's too, uh, it's not scalable, it's too much hassle, but it's, it's even way more fun to, especially because we all missed it so much. Just yeah, yeah. see each other and not, not Zoom and, and yeah. <laughs> search, I wish we could meet in person. Yeah. yeah, one day. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we, we, we organized uh, a trial 
there's some bots uh, event. And, but yeah, then I decided to scale things up and uh, yeah, I'm now fully focusing on that. So I, yeah, it didn't match with uh, Martin and Jim, unfortunately, but uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, cool. in December there was this pilot in end of February, I did first one in uh, London. There were like 70 people. People were uh, were still uh, buying tickets one hour into the event online, so that's okay. cool. Um, yeah, so there's no uh, there's no program or schedule. It's uh, purely networking, and as a kind of how do you call it gimmick? Or... <laughs> there is no gimmick. <laughs> yeah, I I came up with a robot dance competition. I thought. It's an open bar and uh, mainly British people, so uh, <laughs> let's, let's uh, just see what happens. But uh, yeah, it was quite fun. And, and so the next one is um, again in Amsterdam on April 20. And I already have a uh, couple official sign ups for the robot uh, dance off. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Uh, and uh, is it coming to the United States or to Canada? Well, what's what's the, your plans on kind of spreading across the pond, as they say? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have, yeah, I'm noticing quite some traction in certain areas, <laughs> of course. Uh, uh -huh. And one of those is uh, is Canada, Toronto, for example. With uh, yeah, Oliveira Bay and. Uh, Brian Owen are super enthusiastic and already uh, helping me a bit on the background. So, and yeah, we also got voice flow there, big uh, company with a great community. So yeah, we uh, and, and uh, human first wants to participate. But uh, yeah, and when when we took the or when we had the pre talk uh, the other week, uh, yeah, we already thought a bit about how cool it would be to do something in uh, yeah in the yeah. center of it all you know in, in silicon valley and but yeah it kind of kind of surprises me because i i don't do anything really spectacular just having a drink with <laughs> yeah. like-minded yeah. people you know but and that's all it takes when you're when you're building a community that's all it takes right it just takes yeah. one person to be the facilitator right uh yeah, yeah. A, and, it, and then the rest happens on, on its own. I have sure. to admit it's a, it's a shitload of work to organize it, but uh, I've been <laughs> yeah. reduce, uh, reuse uh, yeah. Yeah, stuff and automate little, little steps. But uh, yeah, I think, you know, the traditional conferences, they are, there are new ones coming on the agenda like <laughs> every month uh, or so. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, I thought, yeah. I just like to do something just a bit different. Yeah, no, I love it. No, it's great. No, you I mean, you built quite some uh, communities yourself, right? Yeah. Um, when I so I, the conversation AI community reminds me of the Android community in the beginning. Uh, I used to work at Motorola Mobility back in two thousand and from two thousand eight until two thousand twelve, and at that time Motorola didn't have a a product. They announced that they were supporting Android, but they didn't even have a product. So we started uh, back then doing a podcast, um, interviewing Android developers who are building apps for other manufacturers, which was like totally unheard of. And so we started that podcast. We were interviewing people every week. Um, you know, everyone from like Angry Birds to to other you know popular apps um, <laughs> yeah. back in the days, and. and uh, it was a way to start a community. So people, you know, we had discussion boards, we had a blog, uh, and then we started doing uh, online meetups uh, as well as um, in-person meetups. So we would tag along with uh, some of the some of the bigger industry events, and we'd have a little yeah. separate side event. And that's how it all happened. Um, that's how we kind of spread the word, and that's how we, you know, built that that uh, that community. And I think, um, uh, yeah, you guys had the yeah. same energy, you know. With something new and we were, you were all excited about the same and yeah you didn't know exactly where it was going but you were all in for no we, adventure, right? i would i would be lying if i knew exactly where i was going i had a, a plan like an idea of like okay this is where i think it should be you know a year from now 
Um, but who knew? And so, I mean, that's when I first started podcasting. And that's uh, how I love to tell stories and hear other people's stories primarily. Um, yeah. So yeah. Well, very cool. Well, thank you uh, for all this great information. Uh, Baron, uh, you, you have a pretty awesome background. Uh, sometimes you might be behind the scenes, but uh, I think the value that you're bringing to the Conversational AI community is pretty huge. So thank you uh, for doing that and, and keep going strong. Yeah, thanks. My pleasure. Uh, so uh, let's do some rapid fire. In the meantime, if you guys have any questions, uh, definitely put it in the chat. Um, and anything on Conversational AI in terms of maybe upcoming events, uh, let us know. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll start off with, with that uh, for for a question in the community um, because I know sometimes people are hesitant in asking questions. We'll start with a question to the community. Yeah. Um, what are what are, for those that are listening in? What are some of the events that you're attending in the upcoming spring or summer time frame? Uh, we'll love to hear where uh, should we be going to. Maybe we'll bring the the podcast uh, on the road, as they say. Uh, we'll love to hear some of the events where you guys are learning uh, the latest and greatest technology and, and networking, as Baron uh, says. Including uh, virtual ones? Because yeah, virtual like ones. Yeah, in person or virtual. Conversation yeah. uh, Design Institute uh, organizes an awesome festival. They call it like an online two days. Uh, yeah, with fun and great, uh, great talks and, and stuff. Yeah, I've heard about that one. Um, I didn't intend it, uh, but I, I've heard about it and I heard uh, good things about it. So yeah, uh, let's... they are, uh, they are uh, media partner of the upcoming Beers and Bots. And it's, uh, oh, cool! Yeah, they're also from Amsterdam. So uh, yeah, it's. Uh, what's it about? <laughs> what's it? What's it about Amsterdam and conversational AI? Uh, let, let yeah, uh, I think we in the Netherlands uh, we love to adopt things early, you know, tech wise. Yeah, because uh, you saw what we saw was uh, we, we at a higher pace at the beginning than Germany, for example. Uh -huh. uh, they're now catching up, and uh, but yeah, for example, we we have like really good four G, five G reception, and yeah. big parts of Germany you still don't have you, you, you have zero G. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we are yeah, doing quite quite okay also with infrastructure and. and that enables us to, to roll out new stuff. Yeah, so, for sure. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, one of the things that we like to do in our rapid fire. Uh, all right. We got uh, a couple comments here. Ben saying, don't forget the UK team of Conversational Design Institute. Don't worry. We give exactly. you a shout out. I, know. So, I hope you've got a beer. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so one of the questions that we always ask in this podcast uh, relates to Conversational AI, but also uh, call centers and customer support lines. Uh, if you were to call into a customer support line and you had a, an issue, you're calling in and you had a problem with the product, uh, and the person that was answering the phone and helping you out was a celebrity, an artist, a musician, who would that person be? And this person could be dead or alive. Oh, wow. <laughs> Elvis. <laughs> Elvis. Oh, he'd be like, well, thank you, well, thank you. <laughs> he'd be like, well, how can I help you there? <laughs> That's my best Elvis impersonation. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Uh, for those of you that are listening in, let us know in the comments uh, who would be your uh, celebrity uh, artist, celebrity artist, musician that would answer your phone call. You, um, you could also choose uh, like the Cylons from Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> uh, you, you do like sci-fi, sci right? Yeah. You do like Star Wars too. Uh, so, uh, have you watched the new Mandalorian? I mean, it's not really new right now, but have you watched the latest season? Yeah, 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 I love it. So, who, who is your favorite Star Wars character? It could be either Mando, or it could be uh, some somebody else in the, in, in the original uh, movies. Uh, both are human. Yeah, I, C-3PO always uh, makes me laugh. <laughs> it's a bit uh, scary uh, character. Let's talk about food. And again, these are just to get to know you a little bit better. Uh, hamburger or pizza? Uh, one day hamburger, one day pizza. <laughs> I, like, I like both. Yeah. Uh, pasta, and a, also a fan of pasta. And there's a question that we ask a lot here in the United States. Do you put pineapple on your pizza? 
or fruit. I, I don't you... want to offend any Italian <laughs> viewers. <laughs> there could be some Italian viewers. That that. But it's yeah. the only combination of uh, something sweet on a non-sweet dish that I yeah. actually like. But I know it's not done. If you ask. <laughs> it's not done as often. Real yeah. connoisseurs. <laughs> <laughs> the real connoisseurs. Yeah, I'm going to Italy in the summer, so I'm gonna. Oh, cool. I'm looking forward to. Some really uh, amazing Italian oh, yeah. Neapolitan pizza. Um, and talk, tell me about uh, your best day. What would be your best day? Uh, and that could be anything from work related to personal life. Like, what would be your best day? My best day? Uh, yeah, well, with the previous uh, Beers and Bots event. Uh, Lloyd Banks uh, bought seven tickets in ten minutes, and you have to you have to pay for them one by one because the registration is a one-on-one -on -one relationship. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that that made my day, and also gave me confidence uh, back then that it would be <laughs> it would all be okay with, with the event. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yesterday I I went on my uh, electrical uh, bicycle and just. Spent two hours in the city, you know, in the, in the sunshine. It's still cold. But, uh, oh, that's awesome! Yeah, yeah. And I, and it I was hear, a good day. And, uh, that was yeah. the best day. That's awesome. Uh, and in Amsterdam, I mean, uh, cycling is huge there, and that's probably the the number one mode of transportation, right, over cars. Yeah, yeah, a lot of uh, electrical uh, aid these days. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Uh, I had a blast. Uh, you know, learning more about you and more about your background. Uh, and I appreciate the time. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for uh, inviting me. And uh, yeah, hope to see you around in Europe or in the States. For yeah. sure. I love, I love to do that. Well, thanks everyone for joining us on today's LinkedIn Live. This has been another Conversations That Matter podcast. I'm your host, Randy Sar, And make sure to tag us with any comments, CTM podcast as well as emailing us at podcast at unifor.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day. Bye bye. See you guys. Take care. Later. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Conversations That Matter. Subscribe to our podcast for more great content. And if you want to learn more about the topic we discussed, visit unifor.com today.